Good evening, I'm Duke Root, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Nebraska basketball guard C.J. Wiltshire has entered the NCAA transfer portal today after three seasons with the team. The New Jersey native was the most tenured Husker on the roster and will have one season of eligibility left as a grad transfer. The Nebraska bowling team is going dancing as an at-large bid in the 18-team NCAA National Tournament. The Huskers are the only program in history to qualify for every national championship tournament since the NCAA sponsored bowling in 2003. The men's NIT continues tonight with two games, UNLV at Seton Hall and Utah hosting VCU. Twelve games in the NBA tonight, including the Clippers at the 76ers, Magic hosting the Warriors, Lakers versus the Grizzlies, Rockets against the Thunder, and the Nuggets hosting the Suns. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Coming up next is Hour 1 of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly, all the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here comes a 3-2 pitch, lifted to right, and drifting over near the line is Williams, and looking up, and it is gone! Wind blows it right out of here, it's a grand slam for Will Walsh, it's 5 nothing Big Red. With Ravel as Andrews swings and lifts it. Right field and deep. Riano going back to the wall. It's gone. Home run, Billy Andrews. And that's the new record. She is the all-time home run queen at the University of Nebraska. Now the 2-2 from Sears. Breaking ball. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number seven will end the eighth inning for Brett Sears. And he has gone eight innings here on a Saturday afternoon. The pitch from Chambers. Coke golfs one to center and deep. Going back to Gadillo, and it's gone! Three run home run, Emerson Cope. Make it 5 2 Nebraska. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. And welcome to our hump day edition of Sports Honor here on the Huskers Radio Network. Hope you're having a great week to this point in time. Big week, Easter week. Uh, that, that caught Cole off guard earlier this week. He had no clue that we had Easter Sunday coming up on Sunday, so he's, he's out of the loop. And well, it is kind of early. I know. March. March Easter's are rare. So, yeah, usually you have the, the trees of full bloom by the time you get to Easter. Everybody wears their bonnets, and uh, you have a great, uh, great time on Easter. But it is su- coming up Sunday. Uh, so Monday, Thursday is tomorrow, Good Friday. Uh, so a lot, a lot of fun, a lot of activities around uh, the, the holiday weekend coming up. We got a great show for you tonight. We're going to talk a lot of spring football, and we're going to have some fun in the next segment. Jessica and I are going to pick some players that we're kind of really interested in how their progress goes during spring practice. And they've had two of them. They'll have practice number three tomorrow. We've not heard anything out of the first two. We'll hear from the head coach tomorrow, and I, I can't wait. And this is where I give my annual speech, Jess, about be careful what you hear the coaches say right now because so many times they'll mention somebody right now that ends up really not doing a ton next year, but they're, they're happy with them and they like what they see. And you can just go back through every spring ball and go, well, they talked a lot about player X, and then player X doesn't do anything. When we get to the, so just be pumped the brakes when Matt Rule mentions a name or two tomorrow because he will. Well, and I just, now's the time where a lot of people get a lot of reps and they're running in and out and there's a lot of opportunities. And so certainly you get some chances that maybe you don't get in the fall. Correct. And so, and then there's also just some guys that might perform well in the spring that they have every intention to redshirt, but yet they've done enough in the spring, but then they, but they just, you know, strategically and making sure that you're utilizing the best opportunities for guys and letting them grow for a year. So some of these true freshmen might ball out in the spring sure and then but yet they might want to utilize a red shirt year uh next year so it just you never know um kind of what who sticks out and then injuries i mean think about the defensive line last year how many of those guys were out and so and and they were real thin and so yeah and then there's always guys that in the fall which who i'm going to talk about one of my guys is where'd that guy come from right exactly you don't hear about in the spring exactly and you don't the guy i think i think you're thinking about you, we didn't hear much about till all of a sudden he's out there making plays. You're yeah. like, I'm looking at my roster going, who the heck is that? Yeah. So, uh, and you, the injury factor is the big thing. I mean, some guys are getting reps now because there are players that are not participating or they're, 
or they're doing small things. Like Coach Rule even said a week or two ago, goes, Isaac Gifford probably doesn't need a lot of spring practice. I yeah. mean, he's played so much football. He knows what we want him to do, and he will do it when we get to games in the fall. So he may get limited reps because he doesn't need to prove to them what he needs, what he can do. Well, and, and a guy like Turner Corcoran, who has been hurt. Uh, ben Scott was hurt. All, he played through injuries he sure the did. entire year last year. So why push some guys, especially when they were not healthy at the end of the season, you know, let them get healthy. So, I, you know, yeah, it's also a, a chance for maybe some guys that you don't see as much. Like Ty Robinson didn't go through spring last year, but there's some guys that maybe are going to be um, not, we don't hear as much of because they don't need it as much. And so you're getting some other guys some opportunities, but you also want to preserve their health as best as possible. Some of these guys that have played a lot of football. Ty's a perfect example. Well, he doesn't need a lot of reps. I mean, he's proven he can play at the Big Ten level, and you need him completely 100% when you step on the field in late August against UTEP. But we'll, we'll throw some names at you. We, we, we've kind of done this in the past, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, we don't know much. I mean, we, we, these are just people that we're kind of interested in. They have our interest, and we'll be uh, kind of following their progress in the coming weeks. All right, Duke uh, delivered the first blow of the night. Uh, the C.J. Welcher news, which came out a couple of hours ago, he has entered the portal. So the first of the big four for Fred Hoiberg's team has made a decision to, to enter the portal. And when I mention the big four, I'm talking about Rink, I'm talking about Juwan, Bryce, and then C.J. I, I've kind of put in my own mind, Jess, and this may not be right, but I've kind of put in my own mind that if we get two of the four, I'll be very happy. If two of the four decide to stay, I'll be okay. If it's only one... You might have to lock the doors on me. Uh, it, it, but if it could go to three where we're ecstatic. So one is off. Now you have the other three. And I keep refreshing my social media. I'm waiting for somebody to go, I'm back. But uh, I saw Rink at the training table today. I thought about asking him, like, hey, could you put out an announcement yeah, for Greg? Yeah. Greg really needs an announcement. I need, I need something to calm the nerves a little bit. But I'm not surprised. I, I mean, CJ, this will be his COVID year. And, you know, his what his role was here. At Nebraska, it, it, it is what it is, right? I don't see him maybe doing anything more. And so maybe he wants to go back closer to home, to the East Coast. Um, he got his degree here. He, he was a big part of this team, and he talked about how much this team meant to him and playing as a part of this team. He was a big part of, you know, again, establishing the culture because he was one of those guys that was a part of that team last year that where it all began. But, you know, you, you can't fault a guy for maybe wanting to get closer to home, maybe wanting to see if he can go somewhere and – play a little bit more, be the guy, be more of the guy. And so um, I was not surprised. I kind of felt that was coming a little bit. And that's why I mentioned last night when you're talking about what, what are the needs, I think we need a shooter now because both of them are gone with yeah. Casey. And, and there's some other guys that can shoot, obviously. But you're two really knockdown shooters um, that were your significant. I think they were one and two, right, in three-point makes and have been the last two, two or three years. years. And so, um, you know, you you got to go find somebody that can knock down some shots from the outside. I think that's going to be uh, pretty high on the list. You think about it with Kese and CJ, they were here three years. That's kind of a long time anymore in yeah. college basketball because of how much jumping there is. You get three out of somebody, you feel like you've almost kind of stolen a year. I'm with you. Disappointed, not surprised. Uh, CJ may go back to the East Coast and get closer to home. Maybe he wants to try to play with his brother. I don't know. Uh, his brother's still in college. I think he's at St. John's. Does that sound right? Simeon? I think yeah, Simeon's I think so. at, at St. John's. So he, he may want to go try to do that for his final year of college basketball. I, I think he leaves here feeling good about Nebraska. Yeah. I think he had a great experience here. Uh, and so all those boxes were checked. Uh, I'll miss him because, he, boy, he there were games he was on a heater and couldn't miss, and it was so fun to watch. Yeah, and I, I think he... I think they'll split amicably. Not always does that happen that way, but I think CJ will be a guy that comes back that will always be a Husker. He mm -hmm. got his degree from here. But, um, you know, you think about the transfer portal and what we're seeing, and, you know, he could go, and I'm not, like, in the mid-majors, obviously, are performing well and always do, but you could go find a school that maybe isn't as, um, that maybe fits more of where he can go and, and light it up every night and be a 25-point scorer. You know, that's a possibility for him so you know I, I i don't fault him i think it'll he'll come back i think he has will think fondly of nebraska and it's not one of those ones sometimes it ends badly <laughs> with transfers but cj wilter is not one of those no he leaves on a, on a good feel okay so that leaves the last three if any of the three would like to put a post out tonight i would certainly welcome that and i think most of husker nation would as well the good news is the husker staff is not just sitting back and waiting i mean i 
I think they're out. They, 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 Nebraska's appearing on a lot of these players' lists about, oh, I've been contacted by, they list 10 schools, and Nebraska's on that list. So this staff is not sitting on their hands. They're over there analyzing that portal, looking at guys that might, they may have a connection to that can help this roster out. I have a lot of confidence in what they have done the last two years and what they have been able to find and secure out of the portal that they'll be able to do that again. I think they're even having some visits coming up soon. I so, agree. yeah. Um, well, Frankie Fiddler is, is, is announced he's coming this weekend to visit here. Yeah. Young man from Omaha. So he'll be on campus. And I think he would be a nice addition if, if he chooses to be a Cornhusker. I think so, too. I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. It, to me, it's, it's those three. And you're going to get a guy like Sam Hoiberg back, who, who is a big piece. He's coming sure back. Is. I really think Jamarcus Lawrence comes back. Hope so. Um, you know, he's another guy we hopefully don't see his name enter the portal. But Eulis is now. Aaron Eulis will be, and they loved him. So there's, I know it seems like a lot, <laughs> and it seems, and, and it's like doom and gloom. But they had a big roster, and you're talking about two of those guys didn't play, didn't step on the court this season. No. And not sure, I don't know, because we didn't see Ramel. I don't know how well Ramel would have fit now because when he was recruited it's changed a little bit mm -hmm. it's changed how what they do and um so i don't know i mean but and blaze yeah he's a big body but i i just i i am not panicking by any means because to me it's like if you get those three back it doesn't matter yeah you got to get the right pieces around them but if you get those three back you're still a top 25 team i, I agree and so we'll we'll kind of hold our breath keep our fingers crossed and uh, wait to hear what Juwan, Bryce, and Rink have to say in the coming weeks. Again, in my mind, I set the bar too. Give me two of the four, and I'm going to be feeling really good about things. I'm going to take the over. I, I think, hope you're right. I hope you're right. I think at least three of them come back. And, you know, I don't, I don't care which of the two or three come back. I, I, I think all, um, the, they're all really quality players and good people too, and I think that's the one thing, and you got to know them better than I did, but I think they're just good young guys and – uh, fit into the program really well. I just think Husker Nation would like to hear from one of them soon. So, <laughs> so hint, hint. <laughs> yeah, uh, moving forward. We're going to have some fun tonight in the program. We're going to pick some players to keep an eye on during spring ball. We're going to also hear from Marquise Buford, one of our favorites. We're going to hear from Sam Phillips later on in the program. He's a part of the men's gymnastics team. They wrapped up a co-championship of the Big Ten yesterday with a stellar score at Ohio State. They beat back the Buckeyes. Uh, got back into Lincoln late last night. Sam dropped by earlier today. We'll chat with him. He is a very, very intelligent, bright, articulate young man, right? I mean, he checks all of that. And he's just infectious, his energy. He, and he is, I mean, if you want to talk about a mayor of Nebraska athletics, he would be in the running. Sure would. He is so well-liked. Isn't among, he on SAC? He, yeah, he was the president. President of SAC, yeah. Um, so he is so well-liked among all the student athletes here, and he's involved in a lot of different things, does a lot of different volunteer work. And then, oh, by the way, he's up for the Nissan Emory Award. He's a finalist for that, which wow. is the Heisman yeah. of men's gymnastics. So th those finalists are out, and he is one of those finalists. Well, good luck to him. And that team has got a lot still ahead of them. They still have the Big Ten meet. Then they have the NCAA meet all coming up in April for them. So it's going to be fun to hear from Sam's. Jamari Butler. Another guy that might be on our list. Who knows? Uh, Jamari certainly started making plays last year. I've had a crush on Jamari for a couple of years. I've just been a huge fan of his. Made some big plays last fall for the Cornhuskers. We'll catch up with Jamari coming up. So a little bit of football uh, feel for us tonight. Again, the head coach will meet with the media tomorrow. I have not heard from him after any of the practices. After practice three, we'll get an update for him. Also, hour number two, Jessica and I are going to forecast our final fours for the men's and women's tournament. The uh, Sweet 16s for the men get going tomorrow night at this time. The women's Sweet 16 starts on Friday night. We'll see uh, if we match up on our picks for that because we, you know, we had our sports nightly. Uh, I hope everybody got entered in that tournament on ESPN.com. Uh, the Sports Nightly page. I think we had over 53 applicants. We would have had more, but somebody in the in the room failed to pass on the invite to our student workers. Cole. So Duke didn't. Cole, get you're a, the manager Duke, of the student workers. Duke didn't get a, a enter in the the Sports Nightly contest, but I'm climbing the ladder. I was like next to last, I think, after day one, but I haven't lost a lot of my my final eight and stuff so i'm like i think i'm in the mid 30s right now we like swapped because i was like at the top i was like tied for fourth at one point and then now i'm i'm at the last but i still also have a lot of, i have all my final four teams left i do too yeah 
So and we're, six we're of gonna, my final eight. You and I are going to pick up some points coming hopefully, up in the next round. Yeah, hopefully there's no upsets. And but. a lot of the folks in the chat room did file and are in there. And I love some of the creativity of the names. Yes. Some are you going to really, read them? I don't have that page up. Do you have it up? <laughs> Wasn't there something about a snake? Yes. My pet snake named Trev? Yes. That was one of them. That's good stuff. All right, so we'll have some fun on the program here tonight. Want, want your involvement as well. Always phone lines, text lines open, 402-413-2400. That is our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. They are your trusted auto partner, 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We're back to talk spring football. Players that we are interested in seeing how they do. We'll get into that next. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And to all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the trail taming forerunner and the sleek Venza hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Things that impair you come in many different shapes and sizes. Some are the shape of beer and liquor bottles. Others look like cigarettes but aren't cigarettes at all. These are the things we know impair us, the things our parents warned us about. What we're not always aware of is our new prescription or the over-the-counter medicine we picked up just for allergies or a bad cold. See, it doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If you are impaired, driving is deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Hey, Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. What does it mean to be locally owned and operated? For Cenex, it means everything. It means that we know if you take your coffee to go or if you like to stay a while. It means we've helped Little Leagues get jerseys and local festivals get funding. It means we know what our communities need. So you'll always leave Cenex with a full tank, full of snacks, or full of smiles, or all of the above. And that means the world to us. Cenex, powered locally. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride. 
the official foundation company of the Huskers. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, it is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie back with you on a Wednesday night. Spring football underway. Huskers have practiced Monday and Tuesday off today. Their third practice, the third of 15, is tomorrow. We will finally hear from the head coach tomorrow, get his take on the first and then three practices. They'll be one-fifth of the way through spring ball after tomorrow. So we thought we would tonight. Jess came up with a list of five players she's intrigued by for the spring. I have five as well. Let's get into it. Give me your number one. I'm going to go with Dylan Rayola, yeah. right? Um, with all the hype and being the number one quarterback coming in. And it's not because I think he's a starter. I actually don't think he will be the number one guy taking the number one reps. I think, I think it's Heinrich. Heinrich Harburg. But just, you know, seeing how he messes, message, meshes with the guys and um, what he looks like on a college field and, and going through this, I mean, it's just, I want to see it. You know, we, his highlights are unbelievable from high school, but I just can't wait to see what he does in a Nebraska uniform. So much attention. He can't go anywhere without just being mobbed everywhere he's been since that. That's a lot for a young guy to take in. He's kind of become, and we do that around here a lot. We anoint people before they've done much, and I hope he, he can handle that mentally. But just to see how he interacts with his teammates, I'll be interested in that. Mm -hmm. does, he be, does he become a leader? Do they respect him? Uh, that I don't know until I kind of watch interactions. Well, and just this defense is pretty good, right? Sure is. You know, so once it's it's just so different when you get here and you start going up against this kind of competition and the their this defense is they they're competitive right i mean they like to right now that's that's where you compete is offense versus defense and the sure. defense wants to win every single rep and so you know seeing how he performs against this really good defense too all right i'm gonna go offense as well with my number one it's demetrius bell demetrius was here a year ago he was a redshirt freshman from nashville tennessee and when I would talk to coaches about, okay, who on the scout team's bothering you? Who, who's giving you trouble? Everyone would mention Demetrius. We can't cover him. He's making big plays. Catches all over the field. So we saw Malachi. We saw Jalen. We saw a little bit of Doss play last year. We did not see Demetrius Bell. And I think there's a feeling he might be the best of that freshman bunch. Now he's a year behind him because he redshirted. I want to see if he, now that he knows it's go time, how does he step up and play? And I remember... Well, last year, not all of the freshmen were here, but especially in fall camp, boy, Jalen Lloyd, um, Jaden Doss, they were lighting up. They were, they were unbelievable in the fall. So just, but they, they're going to get their opportunities. These freshman wide receivers and, and some of these young guys are going to get their opportunities. So let's see what, what Bell does here in, in the spring as well. All right, you're two. Um, I'm going to go with... Um, Gunnar Gatula, uh, offensive lineman, uh, redshirt freshman last year, but out of Lincoln Southeast, coach's kid. He was on the two deep all season la uh, last year. He played in four games, so he actually got some experience. But we hear the big dog, Searles, talk about it all the time. Like, you've got to have a full rotation of guys. You want to be deep in that offensive line room. And so while you got a lot of the, the guys coming back, and, and especially at the tackles with Bryce Benhart and Turner Corcoran, but we have yet to see Turner Corcoran stay healthy. And so, you know, just, just building that depth. But I know he was a guy that Coach Triola was really excited about. And it takes, it, it's a year-long process for a freshman to fill, like, and that's what, what Searles was saying was fascinating the other day. It's like you, you get to your second spring, you're like, okay, I think I can do this. It's just such a whirlwind and, and figuring out how to play at this level. And so seeing the step that he makes, if he was already right there on, on the verge of playing as a true freshman, seeing the step that he makes here this spring, 
Um, and, and again, just building that depth. And I think for the offensive line, we talked about some of the older guys on the defense. Maybe you don't play uh, some of them a lot here in the spring. So I think he'll get some opportunities. Well, Turner, I think, is going to be held out of a lot of stuff. So Gunner was on the two deep a couple times when we would get our Monday releases. And there he was, back up left tackle. They were able to save the red shirt, son of a coach, because his dad's the coach at Lincoln Southeast. Very coachable guy. You're right. The coaches would drop his name every now and then. And when you just kind of listen between the lines, you're like, they believe he's going to be a starter for this team at some point in time. I don't know about it in 2024, but some point in time. It's just, again, that development, right, of these offensive linemen. It's, it, it takes time. And so, you know, the fact that you're allowing him to develop, and I, I think we hear Searles preach about it all the time, but giving him that opportunity to develop. But um, just making that switch now that he's been here a year, a lot of times you see him take a step here in the spring. My number two, I'm going defense. Jeremiah Charles, and we've heard a lot about Jeremiah in the offseason with the track, uh, with the slam dunk contest. But you, if you're around Evan Cooper and you mention Jeremiah Charles, I mean, the, he lights up like a Christmas tree. I mean, he just cannot wait for this guy to be an impact player for this team, has all the tools, all the physical attributes. I can't wait to see if that now translates to the football field. And can he make a climb up a tough depth chart? Because there's some pretty good players in that secondary. Can he climb up that depth chart? You know, when you told me your list, I was thinking about Jeremiah Charles, but I thought I'll probably pick him on my fall list because I just don't know how much – because he is he is a big-time contributor on the track team. And, yep. and they're heading into their outdoor season, and, and they'll – work it out. I don't think he'll probably miss many practices, but he's still balancing both. So I think you might really see him take off more in the fall when he's all locked in on football, but uh, no doubt they are excited about him. Um, I will stick with defense and a name that we learned very quickly last year, James Williams, but you probably know him better as the sack the man. Sack man. He, uh, we were like, where did he come from? And I remember he, he got a big sack in his first game against Northwestern. And I think it was you and David were like, who was that? Who's 90? <laughs> but, and then when he came off the field, they were all calling him Sackman. And so it was like, he's obviously been doing that in practice. They're, they were not surprised at all. So he's got the nickname, the Sackman, but he played in four games. He had two sacks and two big sacks at that. And, um, you know, just was very disruptive. And they ended up being able to preserve his red shirt. So I think he's going to be a big time <sighs> playmaker for this defensive line. They were, I think they were probably... Uh, really debating and whether they should play him the rest of the year yeah. and, and not and just burn the red shirt. Another guy that they couldn't block on scout team. They're like, and then like I talked about Demetrius, they couldn't cover. They couldn't block him. And so they give him a chance and he goes right out there in Northwestern, gets a big sack. Love those kind of stories. And again, those Matt Rule goes, there's more like James on our scout team that you all didn't see that we did that we're so excited about. I'm glad you put him on your list. I'm staying in the defensive backfield for my next one. I've got Ethan Nation here. And Ethan played enough last year where he didn't save the red shirt. They put him in the return game. They, they think he'll be electrifying. He did not get a big kick return last year, but a terrific athlete. This was a guy in one of those All-American games coming out of high school that there was a huge get for Nebraska to grab him in Matt Rural's first recruiting class here, but another highly skilled guy that Coach Cooper is really excited about for his future. And, yeah, he's – they needed him more for that return game because when Billy Kemp got hurt, they, right. they needed – they had to have Premier him. Went yeah. down. So, and uh, – but, yeah, he's – very, very talented, but I think he's probably going to be even more of an impact on the special teams than he is on the defense but yeah. when his career is all said and done. But we'll see. I think he's he's really a, a impact player for both. I'm going to all stick with defense, too. And uh, Stefan Thompson, the linebacker transfer out of Syracuse, he was four seasons up there uh, at Syracuse, so he worked with Tony White. Uh, last season had 52 tackles, four tackles Ooh. for loss, a sack and a half. Was injured in 2022, but in 2021, he was second on the team with 79 tackles. Wow. But here's a guy that knows what are the expectations are of the defensive coordinator, has that relationship there, but also at linebacker, yeah, there are some guys coming back, like a Makai Bear and some guys we saw some big things from, but you're losing your two biggest leaders that have been the leaders for this team for, what, two, three years now, and Nick Henrich and Luke Reimer. So here's an experienced linebacker that you can put in that rotation that um, I think hopefully will – will add a lot of depth there at, at linebacker. And knows Coach White's and, system. Yes, and knows what, what, are, what are the expectations and, and how, how to play and be successful in this defense. I, I kind of expect him, this is, I kind of expect him to start. Yeah. Right? I kind of think he'll be one of, he'll, he'll take Luke or Nick's spot 
in that rotation. So, yeah, I, that's a good call. I'm looking forward to see what he can do here in the spring. All right, you went Gunnar Gatula. I'm going another Husker native, Nebraska native offensive lineman, Sam Sledge, a legacy player, Creighton prep young guy. He also kind of dented the two deep a couple of times last year. One of those games where, like, we had some injury issues. They're going, oh, he's next man up. If we get somebody else rolls an ankle or gets rolled up on, Sam may have to play. They were able to keep the red shirt on him. I think that's huge. How does he and, like, Gunner, how do they progress during the springs? Can they really be a legitimate part of the top seven or eight along that offensive line come fall? It's a big spring for Sam. I'm ready to watch him go to work. And hopefully you're saying not eight. You're saying 10, 10. or 12 that you yeah. feel really good about. So that, that O-line depth is just so important um, throughout a season. All right, last one for me. I'm going to go with a freshman wide receiver, and a lot of it was because I thought he was just a fantastic interview. I'm going with Keelan Smith, the legacy, one of the legacies that they brought in. But unbelievable high school career, was a state champion, but his – his statistics are just jaw-dropping, but 74 catches, uh, 1,268 yards, 17 touchdowns. Um, son of Neil Smith, who's an All-American defensive tackle, but you know he's just—he's a smart, cerebral guy. He's tall. He's a taller wide receiver. These freshman wide receivers are going to get a chance, and so I can't wait to see what how his game translates. And plus, I really like the kid after I interviewed him. I also think—I think he's an oatmeal cookie guy too, yes, if I remember he is. right. I, I also could see him maybe convert into a tight end because of his size. Yeah. And that's what I think the staff will use the spring to judge that. But they, they get excited when you bring up his name, too, because they just know there's a guy that we can make into a real player for us. And I know that was talked about, and he, he's like, I'll, I'll do, do whatever. Sure. I'll do whatever. So you got to love that. But maybe doesn't have the, quite the weight yet, but um, he certainly could have eventually have the size to do that. And he said, I'll do whatever. I think he did play a little bit of tight end, too. So... Um, but, yeah, I think he's pretty special, and we heard the co uh, coaching staff just rave about him, and you cannot deny uh, what he did in high school. So I think he's going to be – and then it just means a little bit more to him because of his dad playing here yeah, and the legacy being player. a legacy. So. Yeah, that was a kind of a theme of that class was a lot of legacy mm -hmm. players in that class. My last one, I'm going running back room, and that's Dante Dowdle, the uh, transfer from Oregon. He's a sophomore now from the state of Mississippi. And I think Malcolm Hartzog, I think there was a relationship there that made Dante really give Nebraska a look. I don't, they put out a couple of snapshots of some guys. If you've seen him, you're like, that looks like an NFL body. I mean, he is really well put together, 6'2", 215. That's the kind of back, that kind of body, that structure you need in the Big Ten Conference with all these physical defenses that you play. You need a big bruising back. I think Dante's it. I cannot wait to watch him in some scrimmages and obviously the spring game in a few weeks. Well, and you needed multiple running backs. You do. So We knew that last year, right? You know, it, we went from, hey, that group is solid to what are we going to do? You know, <laughs> Who's just, carrying the ball this week? It was, um, it was yeah, it was stressful. Uh, but <laughs> to add another one and a proven guy, so uh, that'll be good to add some depth there. I'll tell you the position group that I'm probably the most intrigued to watch is the defensive back room. Yeah. Because there's a lot of competition there, and there's a lot of guys that have played before, but then you got a lot of young talent coming in. I think it's going to be a lot of battles there to see who gets that playing time. Great segue into our next segment, because when we come back, we'll hear from one of those guys that will be in that battle, and that's Marquise Buford. We'll come back and talk to uh, Marquise coming up next. I just remember leaving that day feeling absolutely exhausted. I was sick and tired of living that double life. Mike is a former problem gambler. The anxiety, the depression is real. You start thinking about the money, the, where that could have went to. It's never enough. I could win $10 million today, and I'd go back and try to win 20 tomorrow. Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at lifeafterbet.com. It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. 
Don't miss out on limited time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in store or online today because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1-4 through 124. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, see Lowe's.com for details. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. That's the best way I could describe how it felt for me when I would walk out of either the casino or the keno parlor is that you just felt that, that wave of heat, that wave of oppression kind of hit you, that wave of dread. Mike is a former problem gambler. Right away, you would always know that that drive home would be the worst moments of why. Why did I do this again? Why can't I stop this? Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. Dot com. Are you ready? It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty only at your Midwest Ford dealers. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Hey Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Merch Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Woodhouse Lincoln wants to redefine your driving experience with our stunning lineup of Lincoln vehicles. Come visit us in store off 114th and Giles Road or online anytime at woodhouselincoln.com. Lease at 2023 Lincoln Nautilus for $459 a month for 39 months, 10,500 miles per year, or receive 0.9% APR for 60 months. With approved credit, security deposit way, $3,000 down payment plus first payment at $299 doctor due at signing. Offer expires March 31st, 2024. See dealer for details. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on our Wednesday night. We talked about the defensive backfield maybe being the most intriguing group going into spring ball. Well, one guy who's certainly a leader back there is Marquise Buford. Came off of an injury last year. Huskers were played him in the final four games, which saved a redshirt year for him. And he will be expected to be a big part of the secondary this year. Jessica had a chance to catch up with Marquise. Okay, well, uh, how you feel in coming off the second round of mat drills for you guys? <laughs> um, excited, you know, getting through that, especially with the guys that we got and knowing that 
we overcame it together because it's tough. It's it's really tough. Like the coaches, they don't let up on us at all during that time of the year. So just knowing that we made it through it and not just survive, but we we exceeded. I feel like especially at towards the end of it, you know, a lot of guys could have quit or made excuses for themselves, but everybody finished through the finish line strong. So it was good to see. How helpful was it knowing you guys established what you did last year? This is your number two. You kind of know what to expect going into it. Um, that's big. I feel like, especially like for the older guys that came back from last season, um, just being able to have that experience with the staff and, you know, we kind of, we kind of know where their mind is going. We know how to handle different situations and different times with them. So I feel like that, that's been a huge boost for us, especially this off season, um, with all the young guys that we had come in and the new transfers, um, just having those people that have experience with the coaching staff is, is huge for helping those young guys out, for sure. How are you feeling personally? You got back out on the field at the end of the season, but building off of that, uh, how do you feel? Um, I'm more confident than I've ever been right now. Honestly, I'm just, I'm just ready to get, get, start the season right now, if I'm being honest. But, you know, there's a long process into getting the team ready, getting even myself mentally and my body prepared. So. I'm, I'm just taking it one day at a time, not trying to get too eager, but still not, never getting too low on myself. So, Huskers added another Buford to the roster. How has it been with brother here? Um, it's, just, it's honestly been like back at home. It's, it's really weird seeing him at meetings. <laughs> you know, I walk into a meeting, I look up in a, a few rows up, and I see him sitting down, and I'm like, oh, wow, he's, this is real. He's really here. But, I mean, it's been great. He's been working hard, so I'm proud of him for that. But... More to come for him, for sure. How special was that for your family? We couldn't talk about it until he was signed officially. We haven't had a chance to chat with you, but for him to join Nebraska, that brotherhood, you know, that legacy yeah. is really important to this coaching staff. How special was it for your family when he signed and inked with the Huskers? Um, my parents were eating it up. They love, <laughs> they love every bit of it. Um, it's exciting, you know. It's not, it's not many opportunities that you get to play with your brother, especially yeah. at like a stage like this, a power five division one school such as Nebraska at that, you know, it is special. It's definitely special. And it's something that I've spoken to him about, like, we can't take it for granted, you know, like we're here, we got here, you got here now. So we got to work. You know, no Quentin Newsom, no Omar Brown. How much are you putting it on yourself to maybe step into more of a leadership role for this defensive backs room? Um, first off, we gonna miss them boys. We gonna miss them boys a lot. but. I'm excited, you know. We still got guys, me, Isaac Gifford, Tommy Hill, Deshaun Singleton. So, you know, I feel like I feel like our room's gonna be really well. Especially like we played a lot of snaps with those guys, Quinn and Omar. So we learned a lot from them and I feel like it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to share for our room. You mentioned a lot of guys that names that fans will be familiar with but this young there's a lot of young talent coming in too how does that <laughs> yeah are you excited about them yeah it's gonna it's gonna be a scary few next next few years especially with this um young group of kid guys we just got in man they're 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 special crazy athletic and you can tell they all want to win you know i see the mentality in a lot of them that they actually want to win and they really want to work hard so it's i love to see it you know what goes into developing that young talent, especially starting here in the spring? Because we saw a lot of freshmen play last year for this defense, but to be able to be ready to go, what goes into the development here in the spring? Um, honestly, this is when you're going to have to be your grittiest self that you're ever going to be. You know, spring ball, winter conditions, fall camp, anything that's in the off season is when you're really going to have to tap into like what really drives you to work because it's not like you have a game to prepare for every week, you know. It seems like it's such a long time period of just working out and practicing, working out and practicing. I would say for them, just make sure that they don't get complacent and that they don't get bored with the process that we have, you know, just instilling in them to be like consistent. I feel like it's the biggest thing for them guys right now. Defense played some lights out ball last season. What goes into taking the next step here starting this spring when you guys hit the field for the first time? Um, we we have no excuses for anything anymore like we expect perfection and that's what we're working for honestly i feel like i feel like there's no better year to do it than this year especially with all the guys we got coming back you know we have a lot of experienced football players that are going to be coming back this year so 
it should be really fun. I'm excited. I'm really excited. I couldn't be more excited to play with those guys, especially the ones like Isaac and Ty Rob that came back for their six years, you know, just trying to get them out the right way. Last thing I got for you, what are your goals as you approach spring ball? Um, honestly, I just want to I want to be my best self because I know when I'm at my best, I can help push other people. And, you know, I'm not I'm not one to try to if I'm slacking off, I'm not ever going to try to lead anybody. So just making sure that I'm always on top of my A game so I can be the leader that the team needs me to be. Great stuff. As always, appreciate your time. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. I just I, every time I just love talking to him. Somebody had commented on his interview that he should get into broadcasting. He should. Yeah, he should no, someday he should. be an analyst or, you know, be on media broadcasting, whatever, because he's he's got such a good perspective. He's so smart. But I almost pick his brother, Mario, on my list just because I'm fascinated to see what what that dynamics like having two defensive backs. Um, but I've heard he's pretty special, Mario, but um, Mark, he's kind of the leader now in this yeah, group. Yeah, sure is. So. And how they did such a great job utilizing him for the four games, saving the red shirt. And boy, he played a lot. I mean, it wasn't like he just came in and bid a couple of plays. He, by the, the Iowa game, he played a lot of snaps. Yeah, and somebody else got hurt, right? Did, somebody got. Somebody went, well, limited. Singleton, Deshaun was out, but for most of the. Well, before that, he was yeah. hurt. But, but there somebody was somebody else. else that was limited that he ended up playing yeah. a lot. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the group that I've got a lot on. I asked him afterwards, I was like, is your brother as good of an interview as you? He goes, I don't, I don't know. I don't think he is. And he said, uh, and his dad had told me this at one point, they're, re they're completely different. So they're um, totally different, but both great kids, obviously. So um, I just have been saying this. I'm just glad we got another Buford because uh, Marquise is – Pretty, pretty special, and he's great to work with, and I know he's he is just top-notch, and the staff loves him, absolutely loves him. I know they're probably not going to have permanent captains, but that's a captain right there. Yeah. That's one of them. All right. All right, good stuff. All right, we need to take a break. In our final uh, segment coming in, 402-413-2400. I see a couple of texts have drifted in. We'll answer some of those coming up next. Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Take your car buying experience to new heights with Woodhouse Mazda. Shop our full lineup of luxurious CUVs that will transform the way you travel, like the spacious and sophisticated Mazda CX-90 or the sleek and sporty Mazda CX-5. Plus, lease the 2024 Mazda CX-50 Select for just $399 per month. 36 months, 10,000 miles per year with approved credit, tax title license extra, first payment, and $299 dock fee to its signing. Stock number MM240366. Offer expires April 1st, 2024. See dealer for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Hey mom. Yeah, I got in a crash. I'm okay. I was wearing my seatbelt. People count on you to buckle up. 
Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. 402-413-2400. That's our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. They are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. A couple of texts to get through. Carla uh, says, in watching both the NCAA basketball tournaments, please remind me why the women's sites are home hosted sites as opposed to the neutral sites for the men. Is it uh, not enough adequate sites or is this financial? Um, well, I think a lot of it is wanting to have the good atmospheres and you get the great atmospheres on campuses and it's just, it's what they've done. They've always done that. So the rarity is really the men because in every other sport, it's done that way. Con campus sites for the first couple rounds, volleyball, it's campus sites, basketball or baseball, softball, soccer. It was campus yeah. sites. So men's basketball is kind of the oddity. And I think it's probably financially driven and these cities put up a lot of money to get these tournaments to right. their they, towns. They have to make bids and all of that. Right. So. And look at how many Husker fans went and spent money in Memphis. Yes. A lot. Yeah. So there's a lot that ties into it with the men's tournament. But then I think for the women's too, it just, you know, provides for a, a good atmosphere and also a, another opportunity for this whatever program to get another game because then you can make money off of it. Like a lot of these programs sure. end up making money for having another couple games. Well, I would not be surprised. And there was some chatter about this a few weeks ago that, that Lincoln would like to make a bid. Lincoln would be a great regional yeah. site. I mean, the hotels and the hay, the hay market, fans would love coming Absolutely. here, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and then you also think about the, the local crowd that would go, which we've seen. We'd all go. We've seen what Nebraska fans do, whether their teams are in it or not when they're sporting events around here. Uh, no, text came in, guys, great list. How about Avery, Av, Mav Noonan, Brody Tagaola? Thought Brody looked great in last year's spring game. We actually talked, Jess and I talked about Mav Noonan. I don't think he's completely 100% for the spring, and I don't think Brody is either. I think they're doing some things that I don't know if they're 100% this spring. Be quick, right, on Matt, particularly Maverick? Yeah, I think it was an ACL, and so that happened in fall camp last year, and was he was doing great. I mean, I remember he was a guy that... It's probably going to be in the rotation, and they were raving about. But if you come off the ACL, I mean, six months is the fastest, really. And so you're looking at seven months, probably. And I just don't see – he's probably doing some things and maybe doing some drills, but I just don't see him being a full go here in the spring because you want to be cautious. If he's going to be a, a guy that you want on the field, then you don't want to rush back from, from an injury. So I, I, I'm sure he's out there. I'm sure he's going through some things, but I just don't think he's a – I doubt he's a full go this this entire spring. I'm a big fan. Big fan of Maverick. Yeah. And I think he's going to be a heck of a player here for the Huskers. Tim in Minnesota said the sack man reminds me of another James Williams who played, I think, for the Bears a while back. Only the latter had the name Big Cat. He was, yeah, that's right. He was a good football player. Man, you're dating yourself there a little bit, Tim. That's a that's a way back, uh, way, way back uh, throwback poll. Art in Los Angeles says my five would be Riola. Williams, the sack man. Bullock, which one though? Alex or John? Uh, Charles thought... and Irvin. Ir... Oh, no, they're, they are both back. The Bullocks. Both... both the Bullocks are back. I think yeah. they both are back, yeah. right? So, uh, and then he put in uh, Irvin, Gabe. And, and I don't know I... if Gabe's <sighs> will be back either. I don't know that he's 100% no. for spring ball. I, I think they'll be cautious with him as well. That was fun. All right, top of next hour. Jess and I are going to pick our final fours for the men's and women's. We're on the eve of the men's Sweet 16. The women's Sweet 16 starts on Friday. So we'll have some fun with that as the tournament is sped on into weekend number two. This is, this is a great weekend because there should be some great matchups in the round of 16. So don't go away. Come on back. Have some fun. Hour two next. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up.
At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks. Foundation solutions crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity. With the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse.
Good evening, I'm Duke Rude and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Nebraska basketball guard C.J. Wilcher has entered the NCAA transfer portal today after three seasons with the team. The New Jersey native was the most tenured Husker on the roster and will have one season of eligibility left as a grad transfer. The Nebraska bowling team is going dancing as an at-large bid in the 18-team NCAA National Tournament. The Huskers are the only program in history to qualify for every national championship tournament since the NCAA sponsored bowling in 2003. The men's NIT continues tonight with two games as Seton Hall leads UNLV 44-26 at half and Utah is hosting VCU later tonight. Twelve games in the NBA tonight including the Clippers at the 76ers, Magic hosting the Warriors, Lakers versus the Grizzlies, Rockets against the Thunder, and the Nuggets hosting the Suns. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Coming up next is Hour 2 of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly, all the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here comes the 3-2 pitch. Lifted to right and drifting over near the line is Williams and looking up and it is gone. Wind blows it right out of here. It's a grand slam for Will Walsh. It's 5-0 Big Red. With Ravel as Andrew swings and lifts it. Right field and deep. Riano going back to the wall. It's gone. Home run, Billy Andrews. And that's the new record. She is the all-time home run queen at the University of Nebraska. Now the 2-2 from Sears. Breaking ball. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number seven will end the eighth inning for Brett Sears. And he has gone eight innings here on a Saturday afternoon. The pitch from Chambers. Cope golfs one to center and deep. Going back Delgadillo, and it's gone! Three-run home run, Emerson Cope. Make it 5-2 Nebraska. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. And we're back, hour number two, Sports Island here on a Wednesday night. I hope you had a great day. We are honored that you're going to spend a few minutes with us here this evening. We're going to have a fun hour. We're going to talk some NCAA tournament. The Sweet 16 resumes tomorrow night. For the men, the women starts their Sweet 16 on Friday. We're going to hear from Jamari Butler, who we did not have on our list of guys that we were interested in watching during the spring, but certainly a, a playmaker for the Oscars a year ago. And I know that the, the staff counted on Jamari to have a big fall for Husker football. And we're here from Sam Phillips, part of that Husker winning men's gymnastics team. They clinched a share of the Big Ten regular season championship yesterday by beating Ohio State. They want to get ready for the Big Ten tournament coming up in about a week. And Sam is a delight, one of the true student leaders on this campus. Looking forward to that coming your way later on in the hour. And as always, want to hear from you as well, 402-413-2400. But thought we'd have some fun, Jess, kind of going through the brackets now that we're down to 16 on the men's and women's side. Let's start on the women's side, and, I, and I'm going to start in the upper left-hand corner, and that's where South Carolina is. And uh, they will play Indiana. The bottom half of that bracket is Oregon State, who we saw over the weekend against Notre Dame. I just don't see any of those three teams coming close to touching South Carolina. Yeah, they've, they're on a mission. They got bounced last year, and they've just looked absolutely dominant. We've said that all year long that there's South Carolina and then there's everybody else. Right. I mean, they are head jewelers. Now, probably could have argued that a little bit at times last year. They've been dominant, but so uh, they got to gotta do it on game day, but they have just, they've been dominant. So, I, I mean, they're, I think they'll, they're hands down the favorite to win it. They will play the Hoosiers Friday at four, uh, 3 o'clock on ESPN. That's the Region 1 in Albany. Let's go across the page to Region 2 in Albany. This is the Sweet 16 with Iowa getting ready to play Colorado, who beat K-State uh, in Manhattan over the weekend. And the bottom half of that is Kim Mulkey and LSU Tigers with UCLA. I, I, I don't, I've not felt like Iowa's a Final Four team so I will guess I'll pick somebody in that bottom half, UCLA or LSU. Give me the Bruins. I got to watch them. They held off a pesky Creighton team the other night. I'll, I'm going to take UCLA coming out of that, that bracket. I'm with you. Um, I don't even know. Technically, I don't think Iowa should even get past Colorado. Colorado. Colorado's pretty, pretty physical, right? Mm -hmm. And 
they Iowa doesn't really like physical matchups. They did not like that matchup with West Virginia. I think the and they, I think Colorado's more skilled than West Virginia was. And I think they're going to get some help from the refs. I mean, let's just face it. I, and I'm not one that criticizes the officiating, but the the foul and and free throw discrepancy and some of the calls Huge. that were made. And we've heard that refs have been told to let her be, you know, and so she's. But she's getting a lot of criticism uh, for how she's acting. But I think they're going to get some help just because they want Caitlin to stay in the tournament because of the eyeballs that she brings in. So I don't think she gets, I don't think that it's a fair officiated game until the Elite Eight. So I think Iowa will advance, but I do think USC UCLA. or UCLA gets out of that. All right. So you and I are both UCLA. All right. Let's go bottom left. This is Region 4 in Portland. Texas set to face Gonzaga. NC State against Stanford. I really like. The way Stanford has played so far in this tournament, I mean, they beat a nice Ohio, Iowa State team in overtime who's playing some good basketball. I do think NC State, Stanford's a heck of a game. I'm going to go the Cardinal to win this region, but I wouldn't sleep on the hookums. But I'll, I'll go Stanford. I think, wasn't it, which year was it? I think Texas beat out Stanford, right? It was a big upset. Was it a couple it's years pretty, ago? Pretty recent. So I, I was thinking Texas, but I think... Stanford's going to have that revenge on their mind because of Texas bouncing them the last time they faced in this tournament. So I'm, I'm, I think they're just a tough matchup, Stanford. So when they're clicking, they're they're tough to beat. I struggled with that one, maybe as much as any any of the regions left to pick a Final Four team. All right, bottom corner, uh, Region Three in Portland, USC with Juju Watkins, who is a just a tremendous player that nobody knows about. She plays those West Coast games. They'll know more about her next year when they become in a big come into the Big Ten Conference. They'll play Baylor. I don't think they have any problems with Baylor. Then down at the bottom, you got UConn Duke. Duke knocked off Ohio State, obviously playing really well. Carol Larson, I think, is a tremendous coach. That's an interesting Sweet 16 battle. Uh, but I don't know that either one of those ones can beat USC. Give me the Trojans moving through. I think just because we've had all the same, give me UConn. Okay. So, I mean. Paige Beckers is playing great. Yeah, and they've been there. They've done that. They've got Geno. Uh, so, I, I'm going to give it to the experience of UConn. And I Good. think they're also a team that. They got bounced early last year, and they're, they're pretty hungry and motivated, too. A lot of chalk. I mean, it's pretty chalky. Even if we don't go the ones, we're kind of looking at a lot of the twos. What, what's interesting that neither one of us picked the defending national champion, LSU. I don't even have them getting out of the Sweet 16. I don't think they do either. I think they lose that game. Does it, UCLA, I think, beats them. They haven't looked really good, but they've also got a lot of drama. With they do. Kim Mulkey and maybe a potential article coming out. So, uh, but, I, yeah, I don't, I don't even think that they make the Final Four. Too much noise. Yeah. Too much noise going on uh, for LSU. All right, you mentioned UConn. Let's go there now on the men's side. They're in the East. They play San Diego State. And how about, how about San Diego State back in a Sweet 16? I mean, that's just a, it's an amazing program out there that plays in the Mountain West, which had a great year, had a lot of representation in the tournament, and they did pretty well as a league. Just kudos to San Diego State for getting back into the Sweet 16. Now, they got some help. They edged UAB in round one, and then they got to play Yale instead of Auburn because Yale knocked off Auburn. And they demolished Yale. A lot of you probably didn't stay awake for that game. I didn't because it didn't start till about 9 o'clock Sunday night, which that's a whole other discussion to get into. But uh, I don't think UConn has any trouble with San Diego State. The bottom half of that bracket, though, this is really interesting. Illinois, Iowa State, those two teams were both in Omaha last week. I think that's a great game. I think the Illini are playing great basketball right now. I think Illinois beats Iowa State, but they can't beat UConn. UConn for me in that region. I um, I don't know. I think I've, I'm going to have – I think I've got Iowa State. Do you? Coming out of that region? Yeah. Yeah? Um, yeah, I – I don't know. They, when they play, when they have it all going, they're, they're good. They're pretty, pretty dang good. I so. think I think their coach needs to get a little bit bigger size polo shirts. They're just too tight, <laughs> tight on him there. So you're picking Iowa State in that bracket. All right, good well, for you. Well, no, I actually have um, I have Arizona coming out of that. They're not in that bracket. So no, I have yeah, I have Iowa right. State over UConn. Okay, Iowa right. State over UConn. Yeah. All right, let's go to the South. This is Houston, who survived that overtime game with A&M. They'll play Duke. That is juicy. That is a great matchup. That'll be Friday night. Uh, and then the bottom half of that bracket is NC State, the darling. It was, I believe, Cole's weekend winner, the 11 seeded Wolfpack. Marquette out of the Big East, the number two seed. I think Marquette wins. I think they end the Cinderella run. Houston, Duke, oh, that is just fantastic. I think Houston plays good enough defense to get through. And then I think they play good enough defense. Give me Houston to the Final Four out of the uh, South. 
I've also got Houston in the Final Four and Marquette, too. That I, you know, that's a team that kind of has at times been disappointing in March Madness, but I think this group has got it put together. And, um, yeah, I've got Houston all the way as well. Okay, going to the bottom left, this is the West. This is a great bracket. North Carolina, the one seed, will play Alabama in one of the Sweet 16 games. And then it's Clemson who uh, knocked off Baylor, really upset the Bears. Clemson and Arizona. I love Arizona. I think in some of the, we made some picks months ago. I think some people picked Arizona. I did. So you got Arizona, I think, getting to the Final Four. I've got Arizona winning it. So they're obviously my pick. I picked North Carolina. I think it's Carolina, Arizona to get to the Final Four. I'll stay with what I picked two months ago. I don't love it right now because I think Arizona's playing great. But you and I are on the opposite sides of that. You go Arizona, I go Carolina. That should be fun. That should be a fun couple games uh, in the West region. And we'll wrap it up in the Midwest. Here's Purdue. The Butters will take on Gonzaga. The Zags knocked off Kansas to get to the Sweet 16. The bottom half of that draw, the Creighton Blue Jays and the Tennessee Volunteers. I think that is an amazing game. I think Purdue wins. I'm not sure, I'm not sure how to pick the, the Tennessee Creighton game. I think that's a toss-up. I think it's a really good game. I feel like you... You've seen some streakiness maybe when Creighton is shooting the ball, they can basically play with anybody, but when it's not going down, it's um, people can beat them. I don't know. I, I have Purdue going to the national championship yeah. game, but the way Gonzaga has looked, they might knock them out. Good. I wouldn't be surprised if Gonzaga uh, knocks out Purdue, but I'm going to go with Purdue just because that's what I have in my bracket. And I'm going to pick Tennessee because I'm not going to pick Creighton. I'm with you, and I think the consistency of Tennessee is better than Creighton, so I, I go volunteers against the Boilers, and I've got the Boilers in the Final Four. Although I did tell you this, there is this one stat that no team that's lost in the first round of the SEC, of their conference tournament has gone on to win it, but which mm. we're not picking them to win it, So, but that would right. eliminate Tennessee. Well, there you go. That's kind of our picks going into this weekend. I love this weekend. There's going to be some high-quality basketball. Again, the men's Sweet 16 starts on Thursday night, so tomorrow night at this time we'll have games going on, and then the women get their Sweet 16 cranked up on Friday night. Should be a blast and a lot of fun. Hey, our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline, they are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We'll step aside, get a break, and when we come back, Jamari Butler just got a chance to catch up with a big fella earlier as they got ready for camp to get cranked up. We'll hear from him next. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
Hey, Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Woodhouse has got you covered for your next car, truck, or SUV. We are committed to making the car buying and owning experience better thanks to our knowledgeable sales staff and factory certified technicians. You can discover our large inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles anytime at woodhouse.com where we have made buying a car easier than ever. Whether you need a family hauling SUV, a car to take you around town, or a hardworking truck, Woodhouse has something for everyone. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! What does it mean to be locally owned and operated? For Cenex, it means everything. It means that we know if you take your coffee to go or if you like to stay a while. It means we've helped Little Leagues get jerseys and local festivals get funding. It means we know what our communities need. So you'll always leave Cenex with a full tank, full of snacks, or full of smiles, or all of the above. And that means the world to us. Cenex, powered locally. I just remember leaving that day feeling absolutely exhausted. I was sick and tired of living that double life. Mike is a former problem gambler. The anxiety, the depression is real. You start thinking about the money, the, where that could have went to. It's never enough. I could win $10 million today, and I'd go back and try to win 20 tomorrow. Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. Com. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, it is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Wednesday night. Full show tonight, full show tomorrow. No show Friday. We have afternoon baseball with the Huskers taking on the Northwestern Wildcats uh, in Evanston. So uh, I'll be in Evanston tomorrow. I'll join Jess for a brief part of tomorrow night's show, uh, setting up that Husker series with the Wildcats. Well, spring football, two practices in. Today was an off day for the guys. And then they'll get out there tomorrow. In fact, part of tomorrow's practice is open to the media. So you're going to see a lot of video from practices tomorrow. Uh, the media allowed to go to the first 15, 20 minutes. So you'll see a lot more coverage of Husker football across all uh, the platforms tomorrow, and we'll get a chance to hear from Coach Rural after the game. But last week, we did get a chance to catch up with some of the players and just sat down with big number 10, Jamari Butler. Okay, well, first of all, how are the mat drills this time around? I mean, it was way easier than last year, you know, because we already knew what was coming. So I feel like as a team, we attacked it more. Yeah, this time of year is so important. How much did, did it help? you guys knowing what to expect going into it this time around? I mean, really just going out and attacking it, you know. We know what's coming. You can't run from it, so might as well just attack it. What was your approach to the offseason? Um, what were you kind of targeting here leading before you hit the field for spring ball? I wanted to gain more weight and get more explosive, like coming out of my stand, so I kind of turned my focal, focus point to that. You feel like you, you accomplished that? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, just for this team and the, the culture that was established, you guys started it way back during this time a year ago. How has that progressed so far up until this point? Just, again, that building that, that brotherhood. 
I mean, the brotherhood, you know, it's progressing. It's more of a we over me mentality now. So when you see guys like doing matches and those type of things, we're doing it for each other instead of just trying to get through it. When you closed the chapter on last season and you started to reflect and go back and watch film, overall, how did you feel like you progressed last season? Because it seemed like you were playing some of your best ball there at the end of the season. Oh, uh, yeah, I was. But it's also a lot to improve on, you know. I left a couple of plays out there, and this year I'm going to try to capitalize on those exact same plays. Oh, and you, you stepped into more of a leadership role last season, and I'm sure they're going to expect that from you, too. How, how you feel, have you felt like you've grown in that regard, too? I mean, I used to be a guy who didn't used to say much. So, you know, I feel like I made a lot of progress. And as a team, like, when I say something, like, guys, listen, it's not more of a, like, they kind of just pushing me off. The defensive line group and you guys up front were so, so good last year. How much has that, I guess, have you taken on more of a leadership role for the defense as a, as a whole with so many guys coming back? I mean, we kind of knew, like, we set the tone. So we kind of approached it with that mentality, like every workout, like we're going to lead the defense no matter what we do. So, I mean, you just got to keep progressing on that. So before you hit the field for spring ball, um, what goes into a football team progressing and doing things you need to do here in spring football? What are the, the keys and the goals? I mean, we know the playbook, so it's just going to be like really knowing intentionality between your assignments. So like those little plays that we kind of messed up on, we can get all that out the way. How ready do you become to get on a football field after all the time in the weight room and doing the mat drills? Man, it seems like it can't come <laughs> fast enough. <laughs> How much, um, do you know, just building off of what you guys did last year when you closed the chapter moving into, you know, this new season, how much do you continue to believe and, and have faith in, in where this thing's headed? I mean, I've been bought in from the jump. So, I mean, as a team, we're buying in more because with the stuff Coach Rue talked about, like, we did that last year and it worked. When we tried our own way, it didn't work. So just really just keep buying in. So how do you take that next step? I mean, as a defense, just getting more tight-knit. Even as a team, I wouldn't even say just as a defense. You know, spending time with guys you're not usually around. Appreciate your time. Thank you. You know, I was, I was thinking, like, how much time does Jamari have left? I feel like he's been here a while, but mm -hmm. he still has two, two years left. He's a junior, yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, but... He's a guy we saw really, uh, boy, he really busted out on the scene last year. I th felt like at the end of the year he started playing some of his best football, and he was just really unblockable at times. So hopefully he can continue to build off of that, and he could be a problem there on the outside. I think Terrence Knighton has been terrific for Jamari. Yeah. And I think that – I think Terrence Knighton may be the most underrated coach on this staff. Yeah, well, I, I don't think we've underrated him because yeah. I think you and I – and I have said from – Game one last year, how much I enjoyed listening to the huddles. And then when we saw those guys, and even one of those guys I had in my list, James Williams, they just were hockey, hockey changing it. You know, three the hockey three substitutions. Out, three in, three out. And it was like every time they'd come off the field, he'd start talking about, okay, you three, you're up now. And it, there was no drop off, really. And so the way that he was able to get the most out of a lot of guys that we had no idea that we're going to be playing and then some of those freshmen that normally it takes them a while to to be able to play i mean look at kai wallen you could go down the list of all the guys that contributed on the defensive Prince line Will. so yeah they're uh, just he had such depth by the end of it and we were going into it thinking there wasn't any depth there so the fact he's able to get so many guys ready to play at a high level where it didn't drop off when he's running in rotations absolutely i agree Cam and he's Lynch. a heck of a recruiter I, I think so too you know cam lenhart i need to mention him too as a freshman Contributor last year. Riley Van Poppel. Do you think Riley Van Poppel? There's another one. Um, I think I'm not sure Ty Robinson comes back unless he has a great relationship with Terrence. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You? Yeah, I mean, I think you spent a lot of time with Ty. I think he was probably maybe ready to go, but I think he knew he could grow more with Terrence for one more year. Yeah, and t being in the system with Tony White too, and I, I think he has a deep conviction about where he leaves this place, and he felt like. It wasn't enough to just establish things for a year, you know? I mean, he wanted to be able to be a part of the two years, you know, building this thing. He wanted to be a part of that, and he didn't just want to leave it after one year. And right. he, he saw what they did and believed in it, and so I think that. And then, yeah, I think he thought he could be even better, and he could have even better numbers, more explosive. He didn't get to go through spring ball last year, and while he might not go full on in scrimmages, you know, he still has this time to develop and get better and stronger and all of that. So, yeah, I think he just 
saw a lot of opportunity on the table, both personally and for this program, that he did not want to leave. Andy in the chat brings up a good point. Remember, Jamari, for a few days, went in the portal, and it came back. I mean, and I think, you know, I think he was at that stage where, like, I, I don't know, this isn't the group that, that recruited me. This isn't the group that I've been hanging out with. But I'm glad he did because I think he's going to have a terrific final two years as, as the Oscars. I just keep thinking about the familiarity of all this. They've now, you've asked them about the mad drills. They've done it now twice. They know what it's about. And the only new coach is the quarterback, is coach, is coach Thomas. He's the only new guy on the staff. And so I just think the familiarity, going through it a second time, knowing what's expected, knowing where the, the bar is set, I think, I just think we're set up. I go, everybody's like, you guys do this every spring and summer. You start pumping us up and drinking the Kool-Aid. But I think all of that matters, that there's a comfort level with everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And they, with the coaches, with them too, and, and knowing how hard they can push. And I, I yeah, I think in the, then with the new guys coming in, they were able to prepare them. Hey, is this hard? It's tough. It's tough. But, yeah. you know, they, it wasn't like they, I guess it's easier if you know what you're getting into as opposed to when you don't. Right. And so, you know, they knew it this time around. And you heard Jamari say they were able to attack it. But I think they believe, you know, or I know they believe. I know that they believe. And so, as much as it probably, well, he, they, and I think it was, who was it that told me, well, you got to embrace the suck? Yeah. Um, was that's, it Jamal? That's one of their sayings you that know? they use a lot. So they're embracing that because they, they know that it works. The proof is in the pudding. And especially for the guys on defense, like, you know, that they played lights out so much, so much of last season that I think they bought into it and they believe in it. And so they're able to attack it differently because there's no like, okay, what, what are we getting into? Yeah. What is this going to be? Is this going to work? Well, it obviously works. So now that they're approaching it probably in a, hey, we, let's go at it and all in because there's no doubt that it works and we're going to get better from it. Ron Brown used to always say, embrace the pain. It's kind of a different way of embrace the suck. But when, when you're working out and you are busting it and your lungs are hurting and your legs are quivering, embrace that because that means you're pushing your body to the limit and that's going to get you better and moving forward so i, I can't wait for tomorrow to, uh, just to get coach's take on the first three practices you know he will name he he is brilliant about using the media to get a message out to a particular player a particular group on the team he's really good at doing those kind of things oh yeah and just certain things that he wants to make sure is communicated yes yeah. He's very strategic about that. There's no doubt. Yeah. So Coach Rule will meet with the media after practice. We'll have player availability tomorrow, so we'll get some more players and, and so we can start playing those for you in the coming days as well. Also, you're going to talk to uh, the home run queen, right, yes. tomorrow on the program. I'm excited. Billy Andrews, who just broke the record. We're going to get a chance to sit down with her. She's fantastic, great, but, um, man, what an accomplishment. So I'm excited to get to chat with her. Husker softball headed to Wisconsin for a weekend series of the Badgers. Uh, that, that, race, that race is wide open for softball. There is not a ranked team in the league. Uh, I think the Huskers haven't had maybe the start that we've wanted, and obviously the injury to Jordy kind of derailed a lot of things, but there's still so much for that team to play for, and so a lot of big series, a lot of, a lot of ball still to go. The baseball team will hit the midway, and the softball team maybe already has, the baseball team will hit the midway point of the season next Tuesday when they play Creighton. That'll be the midway point of the season. Just in it, the weather is yet to really warm up and make us feel like it's It's coming. Spring. Let's manifest it. 70 degrees here Friday. I'm not going to be here. I'm not either. That doesn't seem right. that We're not going to be here. And it's going to be 70 back here. So, All right. Need to step aside, get a break. And when we come back, Sam Phillips, part of the Oscar men's gymnastics team, yesterday they knocked off the Buckeyes to claim a share of the Big Ten regular season title, the first ever for men's gym to do that in the Big Ten Conference. We're back to hear from Sam next. Woodhouse Buick is bringing you more for the new year. With every new Buick purchase from Woodhouse, we're including three years of scheduled maintenance. Plus, with our current lease offers going on now, you'll save even more. Lease a 2024 Buick Encore GX for $297 a month for 39 months, 10,000 miles per year. With approved credit, must finance with GM Financial. Must currently lease a 2019 or newer GM vehicle to qualify. $2,795 down payment and first payment plus $299 dock fee due at signing. Offer expires April 1st, 2024. See dealer for details. 
Don't miss out on limited time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in store or online today because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1-4 through 124. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, see Lowe's.com for details. Are you ready? It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty only at your Midwest Ford dealers. If you're an unconditional, wholehearted, and ever-so-loyal Husker fan, you deserve to pay like one everywhere you go. With the free f Husker Visa debit card, fuel your fandom all season and beyond with a debit card just for you. It's free with any checking account from f the bank of Husker Nation. Get your free Husker Visa debit card at any branch or at f slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. What does it mean to be locally owned and operated? For Cenex, it means everything. It means that we know if you take your coffee to go or if you like to stay a while. It means we've helped Little Leagues get jerseys and local festivals get funding. It means we know what our communities need. So you'll always leave Cenex with a full tank, full of snacks, or full of smiles. Or all of the above. And that means the world to us. Cenex. Powered locally. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Are you ready? It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty only at your Midwest Ford dealers. That's the best way I could describe how it felt for me when I would walk out of either the casino or the keno parlor is that you just felt that wave of heat, that wave of oppression kind of hit you, that wave of dread. Mike is a former problem gambler. Right away, you would always know that that drive home would be the worst moments of why. Why did I do this again? Why can't I stop this? Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. Welcome back. 
inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. As we welcome you back to Sports Nightly, we've got another Big Ten championship to celebrate here in Lincoln as Nebraska men's gymnastics clinched a share of the Big Ten title on Tuesday night and it's first ever in program history and here to talk a little bit about that with us is the captain of Husker Men's Gymnastics, Sam Phillips. Sam, congratulations. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Well, how did that feel for you guys to do something that had never been done in program <laughs> history? Um, it was a magical moment. I mean, people were crying to see our coaches tear up and cry and just like be so happy. I mean, just like childlike happiness because they had never done it and we had never done it. And so it was the first time in history we have won any type of Big Ten title. And so it was just a magical moment. And we had such a great high bar lineup. In that last event, we all just were sticking our dismounts and we just, the last two routines, we knew we cleansed it and everyone was just so ecstatic. I, I think I'll never forget that. I love that you're rocking the hat, too, already. Oh, yeah, thank you. No, we, we've we been joking about it. We're like, okay, so how long are we going to wear this until it becomes, like, too much? <laughs> and we're like, eh, maybe, like, a week. And then we'll go to Big Tens, hopefully win, and then we can rock another hat. But it, Yeah, so that's the thing about, uh, for gymnastics, both men's and women's, you have your regular season champion, which you guys just clinched, and then you have your Big Ten championships, which mm -hmm. you still have an opportunity. But all season long, this team has been doing, putting up some massive numbers, and, and again, program, rec rec uh, program breaking numbers. What is it about this group that you guys are doing something that hadn't been done here? I keep telling people, I mean, we're electric. I think Nebraska stands out as a team from all the NCAA where we don't have, like, a common denominator amongst our crew. We don't have one person who looks the same, does the same gymnastics, or maybe has the same structured routine. I mean, we have just such unique people on our team, unique dynamics, and unique skills that each person does. And I think diversity and that uniqueness just makes us just, like, an... Uh, um, unpredictable kind of like firecracker of a team so you know we go there we just perform and we knock it out of the park and I think that's just what's so special about this team and it's it's we have a balance of a lot of young guns and a lot of experience mm -hmm. and I think when that just comes together it's just this perfect mix of like electricity it's just like some fresh new perspective some young studs who, who push the older guys to work harder and they are just pushing us to work harder, and so we work harder, and then we, the whole team just, like, gets better and better. And I think this is the most electric team and talented team I've been on, too. There's nothing like a team that's got that kind of chemistry, and that's yeah. in all sports. It's just, it just makes for, it sets teams apart, really. I mean, and mm -hmm. everybody can say it, but when you have that, it's, it's just different, right? 100%. And you feel it mm -hmm. on the competition floor when things start to just kind of flow and naturally come together, like that's when you realize, okay, like we have a, a team that could do some things here. Like we have that, like you said, um, that team that just clicks, so. So we were, we were talking about this um, on Sports Nightly a couple nights ago about men's gymnastics and the scoring. And, and the thing about you guys is five up, five count. Mm -hmm. Like everybody has to hit for you guys to really put it all together. What is it like dealing with that kind of pressure where, and I'm sure it's been that way since you've been in college, right, the whole time, but because yeah. it changed, I think, over the last. Yeah, it changed. Um, I believe it was after COVID, after it was the 2021 to 2022 year, um, the whole season was five out five count. It used to be six out five count until halfway through and then after winter cup which was an elite meet in february it would go five out five count so what is that like though knowing that like hey you don't get to replace any scores everybody's got a hit it's definitely a lot of pressure um and it's a test on the team's trust in each other um even at this past meet you know i went up floor killed it rings killed it career highs and then um vault and p-bars I kind of, I did not have the best sets, low scores, and, um, you know, I, there was a split second where I felt defeated. I was like, dang, what happened? I was having such a great meet, and, you know, I, I didn't nail my routines for the team, and now they have to count these scores. And we were still leading, but we, I, it kind of closed the gap a bit. So high bar really needed to be 
on. And so I really just, you know, right before I went, one of my teammates was like, Phil, it's my nickname. He's like, Phil, I trust you. And that kind of like instilled that trust in me, like, yeah, yeah, it's not mm -hmm. done. I trust myself, like, I can do it. And then I bone, bone high bar and I won high bar. So it's really, it's a lot of pressure, but you got to know that your teammates have your back. And if you mess up, it's whatever, you know, the guy after you, like, that's his job to carry it through and to make sure that, like, he can build off of that and, like, gain some points back. So um, I'm thankful to have such a great team on my back. And that was just a really great moment. And it made me, like, really see the trust that we have in each other and use it. And hopefully, um, you know, it'll carry on. But That's awesome. Is high bar your favorite? Yes. I is, would that, say, is that your best? High bar and floor are my best. I will, it's kind of different between who's your, what's your best and what's your favorite sometimes, yeah, right? Yeah, I would say high bar is my favorite. Um, competing, I love competing floor more. High bar is scary to compete. I always say, I'm like, I chose like such a not good event to be like the best at <laughs> because to be my favorite event, I should say, um, because competing it is just so nerve wracking. Cause it's, you know, you, you're flying off the bar. You got to worry about doing the release good, but not doing it too good where you're like close, not holding back, but not like, you know, missing it. So it's just, it's a scary event to compete, but I love competing. It's thrilling. And the feeling of sticking that dismount and finishing the routine, I would say high bar is like one of the most satisfying. Like, yeah, I just did that. Um, and then floor, I've just always, it's like a stage for me. It's like a performance. Mm -hmm. You can dance, you can get loose, you can kind of get all your energy out on floor, which is why I love competing it. Um, you you, you kind of don't have to worry about holding back. You can kind of just go, so. Um, so I wanted to talk about your backstory and how you got here, because you were all over the place here on campus. You do so many things outside of just competing for yeah. gymnastics. But um, I thought it was fascinating the other day, we were at an event that you were talking about how you got here, and you were not going to come to Nebraska. And then you no. came here, and you <laughs> couldn't say no. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us, take us through that? Yeah, so for the listeners, um, I'm from Los Angeles, California, specifically the Valley, so like Woodland Hills. And... Um, Usually gymnasts, it's a small community, and so they have like a school that they're eyeing, and everyone kind of knows that they're gonna go there, you know? Like, oh yeah, this guy's probably gonna go to Michigan, or this guy's, and so for me, it was like Ohio State. Um, I was kind of close with the coaches. Um, they're very similar to my club coaches, and I, my, my grandpa lives out there, so I was kind of like almost set on it. But you need five recruiting trips. You don't need it, but that's your limit, so you take them. And so I was, Nebraska was one of the schools that reached out to me. They were a growing program. They were doing really well. You know, a lot of, like, fac new facilities getting it done and, like, you know, buzz around Nebraska. So I was like, all right, like, I'll give them a shot. Fine, whatever. Big Ten school, they're hitting their stride. They're pretty good. Their team's familiar to me. Like, let's give them a go, you know. This could, this could be some. And so... My teammate was like, oh, you're going to be a corn husker? Like, you know, like, what's a corn husker? And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm just going there for a trip. I'm giving them a shot, you know. And then this was my second to last trip. This is my fourth trip. Um, and I, just about at the end of it, I was like, I'm probably going to commit here because <laughs> I just loved it. I just immediately when I was hanging with, out with the team and when I stepped on campus and just talking with the coaches, I mean, I was so comfortable and comfortable in ways that I didn't even know about. Like looking back at it, just like my very first conversation with my assistant coach, I like just kept laughing and embarrassing myself. I like spit my water out at the lunch table. I was just laughing and I was just like, it was just so home. Mm -hmm. It just felt like home and I was so comfortable here. I couldn't say no. I mean, plus all the benefits and everything. So um, I basically kind of committed at the end of my trip and then like, officially committed a couple of days after and it was I didn't even go on my last trip so wow so yeah. you just knew mm -hmm. okay let's circle back and talk back uh, to this team and and what's ahead you got the big 10 championships being that you just got you guys just clinched the the regular season how much confidence are you taking into the rest of the season 100 percent 110 percent not only did we clinch the big 10 regular season championship but we clinched it at an away meet scoring our season high at an away meet um, we've had some of our best meets at away meets. We hit 30 for 30 uh, back at Cal, and we hit our season high score here at, or there at Ohio. So, and we won. And right now we're, we're thinking, hey, Michigan has not had good away meets. They had like six home meets. They're comfortable at home. 
let's see what you can do out on the road. Mm -hmm. And because we've had that experience. So now we're hungry, we're fired up, we know we can win now. And so, and we know we can win away too. So now we're just going to put, I think we're really just going to put the pieces together, align, align our chessboard. I don't know if that's a saying, and just, and just play. We're ready. And <laughs> Great stuff. I knew you'd, you'd knock it out of the park. Uh, you're fantastic you. and have just done so much. So appreciate you coming in and best luck. Congratulations, first of all, bringing, in, bringing home that Big Ten title. But uh, you. hopefully you guys add a couple more trophies to the trophy case here coming 100%. up. 100%. Hopefully we do. I'm going to tell you right now, we will. <laughs> there we go. It's a manifestation. I love it. That is Sam Phillips with Nebraska Men's ja Gymnastics coming off the Big Ten Championship. Coming up next, the Big Ten Championships at Illinois um, next weekend. So we'll be paying close attention to that. All right, keep it here on Sports Nightly. we got much more to come. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. I just remember leaving that day feeling absolutely exhausted. I was sick and tired of living that double life. Mike is a former problem gambler. The anxiety, the depression is real. You start thinking about the money, the, where that could have went to. It's never enough. I could win $10 million today, and I'd go back and try to win 20 tomorrow. Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at lifeafterbet.com. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Other irrigation companies are finally discovering what TNL Irrigation is known for decades. Continuous movement is the best way to irrigate. While they'll have you pay for complicated upgrades to get steady, even water application with their high voltage electric systems, all TNL Irrigation pivots and linears are propelled safely and smoothly by powerful hydrostatic drive. Continuous movement isn't new, it's the TNL standard. Don't get talked into a reinvented wheel. Pick the proven original. Call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com. TNL, like no other. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center. Got ready to wrap up tonight's show. What a terrific interview with Sam Phillips. Well, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan now. He said that was fun. He <laughs> is fun. I mean, I'm telling you, we, I talked to him for 30 minutes, but obviously for this timing purposes, yeah. couldn't fit it all in. So I'm going to post the full interview. Oh, good. But what he, um, what we didn't talk about in that part of it, he's the... SAC president, he's volunteered, he's all, he's involved in so many different things. And I mean, I said this earlier, but I, I really think if you ran a mayor election for Nebraska athletics, he'd be on the ballot and probably be a favorite to win. He's just, he's so involved and does so many things. I mean, he's just a great student athlete. So, and he's fun. And I loved his story about he's an LA guy. No way he's coming to Nebraska, comes here. And by the end of it, he didn't even take his last visit. He's like, I'm in, I'm, I'm going to Nebraska. And he's got big aspirations. Oh, yeah. He, I mean, he's got a lot of passions. And so um, that's another thing. He says, I've got a plan A, a plan B, a plan C, a plan D. And I think he's interested in a lot of different things. And so well, he's going to be able to do whatever he wants to do. That's for sure. Well, congratulations to them. You were adding up yesterday the, the league championships that we've gotten so far in this school year. Soccer uh, back in the, in the fall. Volleyball won the Big Ten Conference and now men's gym. And they've got a chance to do the double dip because of the tournament in a couple of weeks. And I think they're going to be fired up to try to go win that thing. Yeah, I think they, they got a lot of confidence now. And they, you heard him saying they've, they've done their best on the road. So hopefully they can put another trophy in the case. And I told him, too, he didn't realize this. I was like, you guys got the new AD, his first trophy. And he's like, oh, man, we did. I'm going to tell the team that. A week into the, the deal. So. I, Chuck, 
Schmelka, the head coach, would be a horrible poker player because when I saw him back in January, I went, you're going to be good? And he's like, Greg, we're good. And he's, just, he's throwing out, we're going to get 420. And I'm like, 420, coach, come on now. You haven't done that. He's like, Greg, I think it's coming. And they hit 418 yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yesterday. So congratulations to them. And that was, that was a delight to hear Sam Phillips. One of the other Big Ten teams you just mentioned, uh, soccer, I ran into Coach Walker uh, last night. Mm -hmm. And he likes this group, which a lot of them are coming back. Yeah. So I think he's pretty excited about the group that they've got coming back and to build off of what they did last season. They've had some matches already here in the spring. Yeah. they got a couple more lined up. Obviously, Eleanor has graduated, and she's signed a pro contract to go play over in Europe. But I asked know, him that. I was like, how are you going to replace Eleanor? He's like, that's the question. Yeah. That's but the But, you know, question. Sarah Weber can score. They've yes. got some people that can find the net. So I, I think they're going to be good. And that's a program that's really, you know, it's been traditionally pretty darn good, and I think they've kind of found their footing a little bit. So that'll be fun when that gets cranked up in the, in the fall as well. Well, it's interesting that Duke is here tonight running things for us because I know you and Duke are big fans of The Bachelor, which ended this week. Just me and Duke? <laughs> okay. Yes, I am. It's, I, it's one of my... It's one of my uh, guilty pleasures. Guilty pleasures. <laughs> uh, well, the winner, the gal, the winner, the gal who got asked to be married in this. Her name is Kelsey Anderson. She is from the New Orleans area. She had an older brother named Matt who came here on a football scholarship a few years ago. He's here a couple of years. He transferred out. I think he went to La Tech, maybe? Hmm. Went back to a school in Louisiana, but he was here for a couple of years. Greg Austin was his line coach for a few seasons, but he left. But how about that? A little Husker connection, Duke, to the, the, the gal who uh, ended up getting engaged. Did you know that, Duke? Yeah. I didn't know that. I had no, no idea. I didn't have any it's clue. Cool. You sent me that thing. I'm like, wow, that's an interesting thing. So, yeah. So the Bachelor's over. So for my guilty pleasure time, I've got, I got a lot of open time now between now and the Bachelorette. <laughs> and I was underwhelmed by the pick of the Bachelorette. Jen? I liked Jen, but what's this shot o'clock thing? That, did not, that was a bomb. I didn't like that. The what? When she got introduced, she goes, well, I'm thinking about shot o'clock. Oh, I, I fast forward because oh. I was like, I didn't listen. And so they passed out shots there by the audience. It's shot o'clock. Let's oh, take a shot. Oh, yeah. See, so, I didn't know. Nope. I think she'll be fun, but it was not on anybody's radar that she was going to be the bachelorette. Who would have thought we would have been talking Bachelor Nation? Here? Well, just because you and Duke are here, so yeah, you guys are big so fans. So we could talk about it, yeah. I, mean, uh, I, I honestly watched this past season, but my mom's been a big fan. But that was the first season I've watched. He so. was good. He did a good job. Yeah, I liked him. Because I watched the last year's finale with my mom, and then I was like, okay, I'll watch this year. And then there was a Lincoln tie, there was a there was. Valentino's mm -hmm. uh, tie there, so I watched there. And then she didn't make it out of the first night. No, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but I fast forward through a lot. I got I got to admit, some of it is a little long. Duke, do you like have watch parties at your place and stuff with your buddies? Yeah, I mean, my roommates. Are you? Is your mic on? Is your mic, is your mic, on? mic on? Turn your mic on. <laughs> You're on. I figured it. It's huge on college campuses. So I'm, you know, I do it because I try to stay hip. I try to stay kind of in the, you know, I want to be not uh, some dinosaur. And you have three daughters. And they don't watch it. Oh, they don't? No, no. And my wife, okay. if my wife's listening right now, she is mad. She thinks it's embarrassing. What? That I watch this. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So she doesn't no, watch no, it? No, 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 not at all. Oh, I thought maybe you were watching it with New your daughters. You just, you just watch it. Just me. That's amazing. It's my little thing. <laughs> all right, I am not here tomorrow night, but I'm going to make an appearance. I'll be in Chicago getting ready for baseball, but you got a lot of stuff coming tomorrow night. Yeah, we're here from Billy Andrews, the new home run queen. We've got football practice reports. He'll hear from Coach Roll. I'm going to try to get, hopefully, another couple post-practice interviews. So, Good. yeah. Good. And the 316 will be going on. You'll yes. be able to update people on games. Yep. You'll be distracted. I have a hard time doing a ball game or this show when we got big events going on. Yeah. Hard. Well, hard. Nothing it's also that because I... that TV's right behind you. I don't have a TV right in front of me. I know. We never turn that one on for you over there. Well, that'll do it for the show tonight. Great stuff. Uh, you uh, <laughs> will have a great show tomorrow night. Jess will join you. Cole's joke of the week is tomorrow night. Ethan said, uh, Greg, give me your man card. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> uh, thanks to Duke for steering the ship for us. And I have a great night. I'll talk to Jess tomorrow night from Evanston. Good night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts.
Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Husker! Did I forget something? No, just wanted to tell you I love you. Oh, don't forget to buckle up. Drive safe. I will. Love you too. Someone is counting on you to buckle up. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. TNL Irrigation Company knows their way around a field and across it, into the corners, and even through storms. TNL engineers are constantly working on solutions producers need, like the new Gooseneck Cradle Corner System Attachment. It greatly improves corner span stability to tackle steep terrain and stand up to high winds. If you're looking to upgrade your corner system or add on new, call your